Gary McCarthy, the mayor of the city of Schenectady. I want to welcome everyone here today in support of Madeline Thorne's candidacy for the New York State Senate's 49th district. We've had a lot of discussion in New York State over the last few years about property taxes and other uh, fees that are charged. We talked about the 2% property tax cap. Uh, I will tell you it is a good message. There are a lot of good things that are happening in New York State. But at the local level, there is very little of substance that actually turns into bottom line savings for local taxpayers and governments at the city, village, town, and county level. And that's why we're here today to support Madeline to start that discussion as individuals are making decisions on who they're going to vote for to send representatives back to the New York State Legislature. We need people with a clear message, a clear vision, in the ability to dramatically change the way the fee structure and property taxes are structured in New York State. Have a big round of applause for Madeline Thorne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor McCarthy. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. My name is Madeline Thorne, and I am running for the New York State Senate in the 49th District. And today, I am speaking to you about an affliction that has hit all of our towns and all of our cities, and that affliction is called high property taxes, driving people from being able to invest in homes or even become a first home buyer. I am establishing Save Our Homes an initiative to bring our local property taxes back under control. In 2011, New York State implemented the 2% tax cap. Along with that, we were proposed mandate relief. That relief has not come to our municipalities. Instead, what has happened, our local governments are caught in an impossible situation. They can either raise revenues, or cut enough out of their budgets to balance those budgets. Last week, Mayor McCarthy proposed a budget that will actually reduce our spending by one half of a percent, yet the taxes in Schenectady will increase due to these unfunded mandates that the state has sent down to the city and county level. With this 2% tax cap increase or level, we will need to cut jobs and reduce services to the citizens of Schenectady. The county and the, of Schenectady and also up in Fulton County, they were not so lucky. They will actually have to break through the tap, tax cap and increase taxes due to these unfair mandates. In many cases, even the most draconian of cuts will still not bring our, our budgets under balance. Imposing a tax cap while at the same time cutting off a fair system of state aid and legislating costly burdens on the local government simply doesn't work. Implementation of the tax cap has put the cart before the horse. What needed to happen? Reducing mandates and equitable state aid should have come first. There would have been no problem staying within the tax cap's limitations. Records show that when state aid increases, our property taxes go down. In spite of what some of us may think, our local representatives do not want to increase our taxes. When our taxes increase, their tax increase. And they don't want to come up, face us in our shopping markets or walking down the street after they've had to raise our taxes. They want to find relief too, and they face re-election. They don't want you knock on, knocking on their door and having to hear about high property taxes. Given a choice between paving our streets or providing amp so that our ambulances can get to us in an emergency or repairing our children's playgrounds, our county and city legislators are facing tough choices every day. Saving Our Homes is an initiative to bring the state of New York budgets under control so we can reduce local taxes with four primary goals. Relieve local municipalities from unfunded mandates, 
establish an equitable system of state aid, providing Medicaid relief, and increasing school aid. First, let's talk about our unfunded mandates. An unfunded mandate requires that a local government provide a service when the state does not necessarily provide the funding to do so. In many cases, this limits innovation and flexibility. It forces local leaders to be less efficient, less cost effective. And in the end, we all bear the burden through higher property taxes. Some mandates are simply the cost of doing business, such as employees must be paid a fair wage, and some, however, are examples of the government, the state government, kicking the can down the road, forcing fees and, and burdens onto their smaller governments, the local governments. In 1989, Local Government Management Improvement Fund was established requiring that our states, cities, uh, maintain records for access by the citizens. There was a fund set up through fees attached to our county clerk's office when we search for our deeds and our titles. In 2008, the state government raided that fund, taking that dedicated monies to balance their own budget. However, the mandate was never relieved off the books. Our cities, counties, and school districts still must maintain our records, but the funding has been greatly reduced. Another mandate prevents local governments from taking title to some abandoned property, thereby shifting the fight against blight onto our communities. As you can see, some of the solutions are simple and some need a comprehensive study. A systematic review with local government input. After all, they are the ones that provide these services and who better to determine how to best deliver them effectively than those people who are responsible for delivering them effectively. A second way New York State can help reduce high property taxes is through a fair and equitable distribution of state aid. It's called the Aid and Incentive to Municipalities, AIM. In other words, state aid to cities, towns, and villages. Not only has state aid been cut, but the aid that is in place doesn't seem to be distributed in any logical means. In 2011-2012, the city of Schenectady, with a population of 66,000, received $5 million less than the city of Utica, who has 4,000 fewer citizens. There is no rhyme and there is no reason. We need to review state aid to the cities and make it at least equitable. And you ask how Albany determines this? The, the, no one can provide an answer. The process needs to be overhauled. When local governments receive the aid they deserve, our property taxes will go down. A third way New York State can reduce property taxes is by relieving the Medicaid burden it puts on the counties. In 2011, fully half of Schenectady County budget went to pay Medicaid costs. In rural counties, Medicaid costs can be as much as 80% of their budget, and that is before any other unfunded mandate is accounted for. In other words, in Schenectady County, for every dollar cut in expenses, they can only save us, the taxpayers, 50 cents on that dollar. Medicaid costs in New York State are well over twice the national average. If we were able to cut back to only twice the national average, we would save $3 billion. We need to put the politics and special interests aside and get to work correcting the, uh, the Medicaid debacle in Albany. Another way to reduce our local property taxes is by restoring cuts to local education and allowing our teachers to teach again. The 2% cap has put school districts in the same position of many of our municipalities. Without mandate relief, the only choice they have is to cut back on jobs and programs. At the same time teachers are spending an increasing amount of time doing paperwork and writing reports and less time with our children, our schools must return to their core purpose of teaching our children. The legislator must act immediately 
to identify and take advantage of the low-hanging fruit. And where is that low-hanging fruit? Let's involve our teachers and our local school boards. They know what the problems are. We can work with them to affect this kind of relief to our tax burden. Save Our Home is a mission to relieve the high burden of property taxes. She panics. <laughs> The, man the mandate is relief is the only choice we have is to cut back on jobs and programs. Local governments cannot do it alone. Solutions must come at a state level. Save Our Homes proposes to eliminate the unfair burden imposed on local governments and to reduce our local taxes. Albany needs fresh perspectives, fresh ideas, someone who will work full time for all of our interests. The solutions to our problems won't be found by doing the same things over and over again. Elect me as your next senator and I will go to work full time for you, for me, to fight for an equitable distribution of state aid, work to fix Medicaid, relieve our localities from the crippling effects of unfunded mandates. My mission will be to do the hard work to save our homes. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.